Now, today on assignment, health delivery at the chips compound at Nyakui Kope on the Dwarf Island in the Afran Plains, north of the eastern region, is gradually collapsing with the invasion of the facility by bats. Now, this has not only affected healthcare delivery, but the lives of health workers at the chips compound also are at risk. Ajua Adobia Owusu was in the community and she reports. Nyakui Kope is about two hours drive on a motorbike after crossing the Volta Lake on a boat. The chips compound in Yakuikope serves about three communities. Residents have to travel about two hours to Germany, the nearest community which is about seven kilometers to be able to assess health care. The bats have almost taken over the entire compound, obstructing health delivery. The mammals have destroyed the ceiling of the clinic where they assemble while emitting a shrill sound and a bar stench. Community members are not able to assess the facility due to the stench that emanates from the center. The only health worker at the facility, Emmanuel Menu says the bats usually appear at night and attack him, making it dangerous for him to even come out of his room, which is also at the facility. The stench itself, you can't stay. You have been here uh, for three years. At times we get sick and we have to go and seek for medical treatment. According to the nurse, the car batteries used to generate power to refrigerate vaccines for immunization are all not in good states, compelling him to stop the immunization process. And the battery uh, for the fridge for the immunization has spoiled since October 2017. And there is nothing like that. We have to go to the villages, sleep over to do immunization for the children. We have been doing this since October 2017, and there is no help from anywhere. The chief of the community says several attempts to get the bats out of the community have proven futile. <laughs> We asked for support, but nobody came. So we decided to engage in communal labor to drive them out, but it did not work. Also in Yakuikope, the only basic school, which has 158 pupils, has two permanent teachers and four voluntary teachers who are paid by the community. This has led to the collapse of the junior high school, which serves about five of the surrounding communities. Two teachers over here taking a class, KG1 up to the level of P6. Taking them become a problem, two teachers. Taking all classes. So with that, parents have started transferring their walls to communities like Dropong. Then the SMC chairman is a student of this particular GHS because of the system of lack of teachers. When they pose them, they refuse total. And they find means of just leaving the district. That is why the GSS to have collapsed. The chief of the community said parents refuse to pay a contribution of 10 Ghana cities, which is paid to the community teaching assistants. Me, me, wo, uh, me, do PTA, me, task PTA, to, kono, for, uh, volunteer, gaka, jila, the PTA contributes to pay community teaching assistance, but due to economic hardship, some parents are unable to pay. He therefore called on the district assembly and other civil societies to come to their aid. Very heartbreaking at a time when health and education should be at the top of the list. Well, in the studios, Ajoa Odobia Usu has joined us from the newsroom, and she is uh, the person behind this report. And so good to have you in the studios, and thank you for the good job you're doing so far. Also, I have Samuel Kwame Ajo, he's the president of Network of Hope, and he's also joined by Ian Kwame Asumeni, who is the media relations officer for Network of Hope as well. Good to have you all in the studios. Ajoa, let me come to you first. When did this bat infestation problem start? This is something they've been battling with for about a year. Okay. Before I went there, I was there somewhere in March, April. A whole year? Yes. And what they say is that they've tried every available means to drive the bat away, but it's not working. 
at a point they had to employ the services of even the community members mm -hmm. to drive these batterways that did not work they had to buy some nets yeah hoping that that could solve the problem so nets to cover nets, the ceiling yes but that didn't work they were able to actually destroy these nets too and they've been able to take most of the ceilings in the health center off too so it looks like they've just given up for a whole year i mean trying to sack the bats is one thing but have they tried to you know communicate with some of the uh, authorities to see if they could help which authorities uh, bella what you should know is that this particular place you're talking about is on an island yeah. the dwarf island mm -hmm. we have about 23 communities on the dwarf island mm. and if you should go there and you look at the conditions you'd realize that um it's more or less like abandoned place mm -hmm. because you'd have to go to that island to be able to give support to, to them. them so it's very difficult for them to be able to come to the district capital mm. to be able to seek for support so what they have been able to do is basically in their own means they said they have called on the authorities but they haven't paid attention to them at all so they haven't even been there to look at the situation to find out how they can even help solve it how many communities are the, does the chips About compound? 20, about three communities only three so not all the communities on the island not at all so there are other health facilities in yes, the other but which are about two or three hours away from where they are and uh, the only form of transportation is a motor bike so if you do not have one you would actually have to pay someone to take you there first of all i know there's no electricity in in these communities exactly so how has the health facility been operating they when they go to the district capital, they're able to charge uh, car batteries and they bring it back to Which the place. Which is like place. two or three hours away. No, for that place, yeah, it's even more. And you, there's no way you can walk. You'd have to take a motorbike. Mm -hmm. So when they go to the district capital, that is when they have to cross that river to be able to get there. So they charge the batteries, they bring them back. And that is what they're using, parry most of the things that's How long do these there. batteries last? Do you know? <laughs> Did they tell you? Yes. For them, they said they sometimes take about three days. Three days? It. Yes. And they depend that's on it. these batteries? Mm -mm. Unbelievable. Let me come to you uh, first. Tell me when you heard about this issue and when you visited the place, what, what is, was it like for you? All right, thank you. Okay, so for us, for Network of what we usually do is we have our yearly projects that we do. Mm -hmm. And so um, we determine uh, which region to do at each year. And so this year we decided to do Volta region. So okay. we contacted a few of our contacts in the region. Mm -hmm. And then they made mention of um, Nakui Kope. Okay. And so I made contact with one of the health workers there. That was when I came in contact with Adobe. Okay. So that was maybe about three months ago. About when we three months ago. Yeah. But you have visited the community. I've not been there. Not personally. there yourself. No. Have you been there? No. Not yet. So you are now heading to the place. But you've got to report. I mean, based on what Adobia has said as well, this is heartbreaking, is it not? Yeah. Especially because now you're saying there's only one health worker left in the community. Yes. How many were there before? You know, uh, when I went to the district capital, I was told that a lot of health workers have been posted there, but they refused to go there because mm. of the conditions. Mm -hmm. So only one person has accepted to be there. So he said he's been there for close to two years. Okay. Yes. So he's, he's been the one there. But he's unable to be effective, especially at night, because that's when the bats come out. Yes, yes, yes. At night, he lives in the facility, you know. The with the bats compound. in the yes, ceiling? Yes, with the bats in the ceiling. But they like darkness, so they mm, usually come yeah. out at night. And because of that, he's not able to come out at night. He's not able to come out of his room. So if someone is dying, out, needs medical attention? Nothing can be done. And you can imagine the stench there. Even if you get there, you know, bats emit some kind yeah. of stench. So the moment you get there, that is what greets you. You, you, you can't even bear it. But he lives in there. He lives there. And that's already posing as a, a you know, a, a exactly. health problem exactly. for him as well. Yes. Unbelievable. But okay, so during the day he operates, so he has to go to the community because I'm sure they don't want to come to the, the, the facility, do they? Well, yes, they don't come to the facility most times. But, you know, they usually go to the community to do immunization. Mm -hmm. And he said they have even stopped because... Now they don't have anything to be able to go to the community to save the people. They don't have drugs. They don't have even the car batteries that they were relying on are no more in good shape. Good shape. So they basically have nothing. So it's just the paracetamol and the few drugs that they have that they use in serving them. So they can no more go to the community. But if you come, then they'll do everything they can to help, help you. you. But since he works in the health sector, it should be easy for him to contact his bosses to get some help. <laughs> yes, he has. Uh -huh. But... As I told you, you'd have to 
travel all the way to that place to be able to help the district hasn't been able to do that yeah. for them so yeah. what he does is occasionally he comes to the district capital and what he's able to get he takes them back to the community to support the members i can't believe this ian kwame asmeni is a media relations officer and i'm coming to you on this one because at this point we're wondering what can be done especially because it's a community that's completely cut off um what can be done to help these people so currently as network of what we are doing so far is to solicit for funds okay yes to renovate the place mm -hmm. so as i speak to you now we are actually renovating the place we are done with the ceiling we are in the process of painting the place as well We've purchased some of the items, that's the beds. We've also acquired some drugs. Okay. Yeah, so... So we're not tearing down the whole building to build no, again? No, no. There's no need for that? There's no need for that. The, but the bats will still come back, won't they? So we've acquired a bat repellent. Okay. Yes, which will be moving there as well. So. But this is a community that has bats dwelling in it, right? It's, you know, it's not the entire community. They only attack the chips compound, and they claim they don't even know where these bats are coming from. Because previously but, there were no bats in the community? No, not in the community, but in the chips okay. compound, which is, um, should I say, about five minutes walk from the main community. Okay. It's not close, so close to the community. Yeah, that means something must be attracting them. Exactly, but um, I could hear some sounds. Okay. When I went, I could not see, I didn't see any bats, mm. but I heard some sounds, and it looks like they're actually dwelling in the ceiling so at night they are able to do whatever they want to do so when you go there you realize that there's a lot of tear, mm. tearing up all that means that a lot more has to be done than just you know mm. providing bat repellents because whatever could be attracting them could still be there okay. yes, right okay which okay you would speak right. Mr. yes so what we are doing is to like she readily said because they've teared down the ceiling mm -hmm. we we've redone that or we've renovated that and yeah. so we've done We've said almost all the loopholes yeah. mm. or the openings where they will have yeah. access to. And then with the installation of the ultrasonic uh, bat repellent, we hope that the sound will at least drive them away from the facility. Oh, they are driven away by sound? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So we're hoping that with the ultrasound uh, bat repellent, at least when we install it, a minute, uh, some minutes away from the facility, mm. it's going to drive them away from... But there's the no side. electricity as well? Yes, there's no electricity. So but what that is more of a solar one. Mm. And, and yeah. it's more of solar. So, okay. so during the daytime, it will charge by itself. All. all right, so you're providing that as well yes, for yes, the people? Yes, we already have that in place. So on the 28th of December, when we make our way there, that will be installed. Oh, yes. that's really good. But education is also now a problem. Because what, they have only two permanent teachers? Teachers. And for community uh, assistance, what these people do is that they go to help the two permanent teachers there. Mm -hmm. I said earlier that because of where the community is, a lot of people refuse postings. It has nothing to do with just the health. Mm -hmm. It has to do with education too. Yeah. So most of the teachers refuse to go there when they are posted. And in fact, with that, the district uh, education director was very, very worried about it. Mm. And it looks like they've... The director didn't know what the situation was? Uh, that he knows okay and in fact for most of the communities that i visited in that particular on that particular island most of them had even just one teacher teaching the entire school mm -hmm. so if it's from primary school to the junior high school you have just one teacher doing everything with how many kids per class did you um, did you check you would have about 20 or 30 uh, people in a class mm -hmm. and you have one teacher doing handling the entire all of them. exactly Wow. Yes, and for the district uh, education director, he said that he spoke with the national service um, coordinators, hoping that when national service persons are posted, because it's just a year, they would. But know, who would want willing. to go to a community that has no electricity? Um, and, and I mean, they don't even have desks in their classrooms to sit on. We're, we're complaining about a lot of things when it comes to education. For desk, I think because it's actually in a rural area, they've been able to make, to manage, make, make yeah, up, um, yeah. desk and they are managing with that. Do they have books? That. Do they have all those things available? Books? No. So you realize that for one of the schools that I visited in one of the communities, uh, City Copper, mm -hmm. over there, the teacher, you know, the, there was this uh, famous thing about a teacher using a stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a common practice there. You find most of them. Mm -hmm. For the City Copper, you realize that the school is just... Um, primary, primary one to six. Okay. So once you get to primary six, that's the end of your education, mm. you cannot continue anymore because you'd have to travel about two hours to the next community to be able to have access to uh, junior high school okay. education. So the females, that's where it ends 
for the male, some of them are willing to walk that long distance. Yeah. So, yeah, they end up getting pregnant. So, getting pregnant? Yes. Or getting married off, maybe. Getting pregnant, actually. Because, wow. Yeah, for one of the ladies that I spoke to, she said, okay, the gentleman was willing to support him, even though the gentleman was also her classmate. So, yes. So she was going to be the housewife whilst he continued with his education. education. And then after that, he sells, he, wherever he goes to school, he's able to sell something and then bring it home to support. When you, when you aired this documentary, did the authorities reach out at all? Um, no, we only had some private individuals coming around. For the district education director, I spoke with him. I spoke to the health director on phone because mm -hmm. he wasn't available. But for the district education director, I spoke to him and he, he was helpless because he felt that he, he, he's been trying. He's spoken to higher authorities, uh -huh. authority, yes, and nothing has been able to come out of it. And so if we should get help after this story is aired, he'll be grateful. We spoke to the municipal chief executive too, yeah. and he, she said that, yes, she's also trying. In the past, she has been able to do, she, you know, um, they have issues with water too, uh -huh. so, um, a borehole has been provided for, I think, about 19 of the communities. Is this have enough provided. for them? For now, they are managing, but about six of them have broken down. So for such communities, they are still struggling. Yes, and she helped to bring these boreholes, and so she's still trying. So once they get the media support, it means that they are making a headway. Let me come to some more because, I mean, without this NGO, then these people may not have found any um, help or aid at all. And I'm taking you outside your comfort zone. Let's talk about the neglect of some of these communities and why this is happening. We have authorities who are saying, vote for me and I'll, I'll fix this, I'll do this and I'll do that. And then after they're voted into power, we barely see much happening. Well, I would say it's all about our national priorities. Okay. Because at the end of the day, during election time, you see these politicians making their way there with all the difficulties that we face. And so maybe as a nation, we need to reprioritize our... Uh, but our the NGOs are getting their priorities right. They are out there helping people. I mean, that shouldn't even be their job. The right? government should be the one handling all these things. We pay taxes. Yes. So I feel that uh, uh, it has come... The time has come for we, the voters, to also be... Uh, for want of a better way, be wise about our choices because these people still make their way to these uh, deprived areas mm -hmm. during election time. So why is that after election they are nowhere to be found? Yeah. And so then we need to sit up and say that these people don't have our interests at heart. At heart. And so then we need to be wise in our voting. Ian, what are we doing to support education in that community as well? Or are you only focusing on health for now? Okay, so as part of our vision, we identify areas in sanitation, okay. education, and then health. Mm. So last year, we did education with the Jolu Special School, mm. where we donated the um, school items. We also have branded exercise books as okay. well. So as part of our donations, we'll be moving some to Nyakweko mm. there to share with the pupils. But what do we do to ensure that the health workers come back? Because we need them. They can't depend on only one person. Yeah. Yeah. Three communities, depending on one chips compound, and there's only one health worker. That's a big problem. Yeah. What are we doing to ensure you, that they, um, they come back? The explanation given was the f that, uh, you know, with the CHIPS compound, we have certain parameters mm -hmm. uh, that is guiding them. And for what they, they have that is guiding them, they feel that, okay, so with that one CHIPS compound serving the three communities is enough because mm -hmm. these communities are actually very close. And so they'll be able to manage with that one CHIPS compound. Okay. Uh, where that community is, is not like Accra, where you have a lot of people yeah. living in a particular community. So for now, it's manageable. It's just mm. that they have to get good facilities. What they have available should be very good enough to serve these three communities. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I hope that the authorities will jump on board and do something. And we always talk about these issues. We seem to come back to the same problems over and over and over again. But of course, they say media gets results. And so we hope that something is done. But on the 28th of December, you'll be there. Yeah to hand over all the things that you Thanks, intend yeah. to. Okay, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah. 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 Okay. You want to say something? Yeah, we, we actually need more support because um, what they need there, what we've done is just about 40% of what they actually need. Mm -hmm. Like Adobe actually said, they, they need the basic things at the facility to be able to save lives, like yeah. the drugs and then the beds. As we speak now, they have only one bed serving the entire community. And so we are reaching out to- One bed? Yes, just one bed. One bed. So you can imagine maybe two or three 
pregnant women coming there to deliver. I mean, it's it, it's not the best. And so, we are reaching out to I mean the general public and yeah. individuals who want to put smiles on the faces of these individuals. I wonder how pregnant women when they are when they are due. I wonder how that is handled. Mm. So they have to travel all the way to the other a health uh, center to be able to on what a motorbike on a motorbike. Okay. Wow. So you, you can actually imagine the, yeah. the stress there where somebody on a motorbike, probably by the time she gets to the health center, the baby lost the baby, yeah. have lost the baby. Anyway, so this has been a report by Ajua Adobia Owusu from the TV3 newsroom. And also in the studios, I've had Samuel Kwame Ajou, the president of Network of Hope, here with his media relations officer, Ian Kwame Asumeni. Thank you so much for joining me um, on the show. And we're looking forward to some good feedback. Sure. sure. Positive re re results we, as well. Sure, sure. We actually hope that you you, you join us. Definitely. Yeah. But you yeah. were asking for people to support. So if yes. they want to support, how, how can they get in touch with you? Okay, so we have a registered mobile money. Number, okay, which is 0557 936 538. Can you just mention it again? 0557 mm -hmm. 936 538. Registered right. on Network of Hope. Okay, but if you don't mind, we'd like to also say a very big thank you to a few of our sponsors. Okay, um, Serrat Clothing, Incitation, Genius Perfection, Mr. Polo G. They've right. been very supportive of our course, and we Definitely. say a very big thank you to everybody who's been supportive. Thank, thank you, you so much as well, as well for coming. And